The staff at Mount Regis Center is dedicated to helping individuals overcome their addictions and return to a life of sobriety. One of the ways in which they do that is by addressing the whole family so that the family can help the individual walk through the process and be a support system to them once they leave. Mount Regis Center also thinks it's important for the family to learn how to cope and take care of themselves during this time as well. Peter Pennington explains the family services that Mount Regis has to offer. Well, we found at Mount Regis that it's a family disease. Um, when one member of the family is addicted to any kind of chemical, uh, family roles change, the family dynamic is altered, and the family program was instituted to help families, spouses, friends, uh, children, parents, become a part of Mount Regis and become a part of the treatment plan for themselves and for the patient. Because while the patients are here, they're going through counseling and they're meeting in groups, but sometimes when they go back home, they don't have that support. So by getting the family involved, it kind of helps the transition. Right. It's easy for the patient. Well, not easy for the patient, but they are here 24 hours a day. They have access to counselors, access to nursing. Uh, they get a treatment plan in place. They have therapy going on constantly. Mm -hmm. While the family is at home getting a few phone calls, having to deal with HIPAA regulations, uh, they can be left in the dark. So we wanted to offer a program that allowed them to come in and be a part of their own treatment plan as well as learning how to be a support system for the loved one as they're going through treatment. It's true because a lot of times family members need help and support during this time too because this is new territory for them also. Absolutely. Uh, and the, the biggest one for the territory is what is enabling and what is supportive. <laughs> and it's difficult because one way of, of enabling or supporting is different for every family. What works for one doesn't work for another. So we offered them to process through their feelings um, and it's really helpful for the family to get together on their own and really work with each other similar to what our patients do uh, to get the help and treatment and feel like they're not alone because a lot of families deal with addiction and it's not really talked about a lot in the social aspects. It's very true and I feel like sometimes it's hard for the patients to open up to their family and they might need that person there to kind of help them talk to their family about what they've been going through and how their addiction has affected them and so it's good to have kind of a structured environment where they can feel comfortable doing that. Exactly and, and that structure is what was one of the big reasons why we did this. Uh, you have patients that deal with a lot of shame, a lot of grief, there's a lot of dishonesty that goes on, uh, manipulating, stealing and to be able to talk to your family and say oh this is what's going on is really hard for them. Um, bringing them in here, being around the counseling staff, working with me uh, as a family program, we offer some interaction with the patients while they're here and a lot of visitation, um, but at the same time, it's the, the main focus is a chance for the family to get together, learn from each other, and say, where can I help, and how do I get help for myself while they're getting help for themselves? That's true, because it can take a toll on the family members as well while their loved one is in here, because you don't really know what to do or how to help, so just mm -hmm. getting that help for yourself can make a huge difference. Right. And, and we, we develop a plan. I always say we need, there needs to be a plan in place. When they leave in transition from here, which is more of a mushroom safe environment, back out to those triggers, to those stressors, work, uh, family obligations and different roles. Um, for the family to be able to have information, to be educated and to know how to say, okay, I'm here for you and I'm willing to do this to help you, although you have to be the one to do it, and they get help for themselves so they learn where their boundaries are. Uh, family dynamics with dealing with chemical dependency, boundaries are sometimes non-existent and sometimes unhealthy and dysfunctional. And we try to shed some light on that so they can make better choices for their whole entire family. It's important to know those boundaries too because sometimes patient might not want to talk about certain things at certain times or you might as a family need to stop drinking around a patient when they come out of recovery or things like that. Just mm -hmm. things, common sense things that you might not think about without going and figuring out where you're your patient is at. Exactly. I mean, some, t some families, it, it's the patient responsibility whether they're going to relapse or not. It, it's their, they have to own it. It's their ownership. Family can be supportive in whether they're choosing to have it in the house or not. That's a big thing people deal with. Uh, what are some of the rules that are going to go by? What, things are going to change and if they're going to be supportive and they're going to take on more responsibility, how much? If they go back to work or back to school or wherever they're going to go, how is the family going to operate? Um, how to build back that trust. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you're not going to be cured when you leave here, but they can at least begin that foundation and grow on that. And, and we urge communication. Be as honest as you can and communicate 
to make things better for the whole entire family. And speaking of communication, if you are suffering from an addiction, the first step is to make that phone call and to call you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Make the phone call. Um, speak to someone in the admissions office. Uh, we have information about the family downstairs. If they come in with the loved one to be admitted or for uh, just an assessment, we can do that. Um, and let them know about our family program that does meet on Thursday afternoon from 2 to 4 um, with visitation after that for family. And then it's all day Friday um, from 9 to about 3.30 to focus on the family. Uh, we also have a family group that meets every Saturday at 2.30 with visitation after that. Um, and then any other individual family counseling would just get, go through the regular individual assigned counselor. And Mount Regis Center is located on Kimball Avenue in Salem. For more information, you can call them at 540-389-4761 or you can go online to mountregis.com.